Welcome, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and we are on our eighth podcast. It's the Great Eight. <laughs> the Great Eight, yes. <laughs> and we are here in the on TV studios, mm-hmm. and I'm here with my co-host, yes, studio engineer, yes, and Arm Candy, and I have a shirt to prove it. <laughs> Chris Gully. Hi, Chris. Hi. So, thanks again for coming along. There you go. And we're really excited today because we have some very special guests with us. Mm -hmm. It's not you. It's not me. Yep. It's not any of our children. Yes. (laughs) But our dear friends. You can adopt me. (laughs) There you go. Okay. Uh, Well, thanks um, for that opportunity. So, here are very great friends. Carol and Rick Durling. Yes. So, hi, guys. Hi. hi. Happy Good to morning. be here. <laughs> Good. We're so happy yeah. to have you. All right. So, today we're going to be talking about some, uh, our, so as far as tea related, we're going to talk about a little tea rendezvous we had of all places in Rome, Italy. We did. And then Rick and Carol are going to share one of their favorite special teas. Yes. And then we're going Pardon? I said I'm excited. <laughs> I'm sorry. I <laughs> didn't give you time to react. Right. Okay, good. Chris is excited, so am I. Yep. And then we're going to wrap up with an organization that Rick and Carol are very passionate about. Yes. And it's a great organization, a lot of value. Yep. And we'll, we'll wrap up with that. Yep. So, before we get to that, but first, tea. Okay, so today we didn't brew the tea, yes, the gullies, but Rick and Carol brought in a tea that they really like, yes, and this is matcha ginger. Tell yep. us a little bit why you like this one. Well, first off, I, I can speak that my wife Carol absolutely adores anything with ginger. Mm-hmm. If you wave ginger at her, she's going to be extremely happy. Wow! <laughs> so you'll find that this tea has a lot of ginger. But it also has a fair amount of matcha in it. It's a green tea with a bunch of other items like rosemary and citrus peel and so forth in it. Mm-hmm. So I find when the matcha is fresh, this absolutely does brighten up my day. Carol? Oh, I find it very soothing, soothing to the stomach. Yep. It helps you get ready for bed in the evening. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, our son Rob, he's also a big ginger uh, fan, tea fan. Same same thing that uh, it it uh, he likes uh, the effect it has on his uh, his uh, gastrointestinal system, and right. um, so that's a, that is a thing. So with the matcha ginger, though, with the matcha, we're getting a little bit of a boost, correct? Yep. yep. Yes. So this one you wouldn't necessarily take drink to relax. I do. Do you? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The boost is, I think, more your immune system. Oh, okay. It doesn't oh. make you really energetic. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> right. Right. There's not enough matcha in it for right. that. Right. Okay, all right. So, Chris, you've got your flavor wheel. What do you think of this well, one? Well, okay. Um, so, it's, uh, well, it's not a, um, so matcha is not, uh, it's uh, not a true tea, right? Or is it? It is. I it's, think you're thinking oh, of. Oh, uh, you're, uh, yeah, yeah, the other one. So okay. So it's got a, um, so I have two, two tea wheels, tea flavor wheels. I hope you know this. So let, let's check this out. So this is kind of a, it's more of a, a an herbal, well, obviously with, with the ginger, that's a big, it's a mm-hmm. big, uh, big, uh, so I'd say kind of um, like a, 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 to me, a kind of a floral taste, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, let me try one more little taste here. Yeah, so like um, lilac or something like that. Okay, you're getting florals. Yeah, I, I am. What do you think? All right. Well, I'm going to tell you, mm-hmm. and because we've been friends so long, I can be honest. Yes. This is very gingery. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Very gingery. And I, if on the scale of loving ginger and not loving ginger i i tend to go a little bit more towards this side mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i i like it yep. I, i'm 
you know, it's it's fine. But I you I think this is pretty much a ginger taste. I don't taste much matcha. Yeah. Okay. It's in there. Yeah. 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 But good. I you thank go. you. Thank you for and you brought your your special mugs too. Yeah. Yeah. All have Great. Our mugs. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. We have our All right. Nice. Mm. Nice. Okay. Postman. Right. All right. Oh, very, very good. good. Okay. Okay. So, well, thanks for bringing that. <laughs> and uh, we always like trying something different. Right. So, today we're going to uh, talk about a couple of things that where we've intersected as far as tea goes. But mm-hmm. I, I wanted to just mention really quick that May is a month of some special anniversary. It is. So, May 19th, we had Meghan Markle. And Prince Harry. Yes. And what did you say at the time? It won't last a year. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> you were wrong. He was, he was wrong. They're, they're, they're still going strong. And then Chris and I, we have an anniversary mm-hmm. next week. Yes, we do. Uh, but it's, what, 40 plus years. Yeah. yeah. Are we still counting? Well, yeah, congratulations yeah. anyway. Yeah, congratulations. And then this week we have another milestone anniversary. Yes. Our great friends. Yep. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This 25 is, beautiful years. This nice. is the silver. That's right. Excellent. Ooh, it is. Yeah. We didn't do anything silver. <laughs> My hair's gotten silver. Oh. Does that count? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. Great. Right. Right. Okay. Well, moving on. So, you know, I thought of all the travels we have done over the many years. And we always have tea. Chris, you're a great uh, Rick. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> There's a new guy here. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not used to more than Chris. Sorry. So, Rick, you always drank tea. I have. Yeah. And so, of all the times we've gone, you always order tea, what, no matter what time of the day, first to start off. Right. But there was a time where we met up in Rome. Mm hmm. We were both doing uh, with different sets, mm-hmm. and it just so happened that we were at Rome at the same time. Yep. Yes. Chris? On the same day. It was amazing. As, as one well. does. As one right? does, yeah. You, yes. you, you connect <laughs> with your friends abroad yeah, when you're right. all in Italy. Yes, right. right. <laughs> Jet setting. Yes, yes. Oh, definitely. So we met up for a nice place for lunch, but then we all went back to Babington's. Right. And that was one of the tea rooms, one of the yeah. few tea rooms of note right. in Rome. And what did you guys think of that? Do you remember much about it? Well, first it was right next to the Spanish Steps, which right. absolutely yes. did yeah. not yeah. hurt. You yeah. miss it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. So it's a, it's a definite don't miss this. Right. But the, uh, the tea room was absolutely spectacular. Yeah. If I recall, I think we bought some tea as well. We bought some tea there. Absolutely. Beautiful. So when we went there, that was one that uh, is featured in Tea Time magazine, Mm -hmm. 2018. Yes. But it was really fun to share that with you guys as, uh, you know, as we've gone to different places just to to be there at the same time and and have tea. Yeah. You've been all over the world having tea. It was an honor to be with you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that one occasion. Wow. That's I have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we've been friends for so many years. It didn't hurt okay. that afterwards we went and found that chocolate shop either. No. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 We we did double down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we did. Yeah. That was uh, very good. What would we say uh, in Italian? Magnifique. Yeah. Oh, that's French. Yeah. Well. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So. Wanted to see, I know you guys have traveled all over, mm-hmm. and you've done a lot of tea experiences, and I thought maybe today you'd want to share one that's very special. Yep. If you have one that uh, you can think of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who was going on this yeah. one. Yeah. Rick and I had the privilege to experience high tea at Raffles. In Singapore. Oh, yes. Raffles was one of the colonial hotels yes. in the English occupation of right. Singapore. I don't know what they would call it that, but they, yeah. they do. Singapore, Raffles is where the Singapore sling was invented. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm familiar with that. While we were there, they had an afternoon tea. Right. 
complete with the tiered plates mm -hmm. with all the scones and sandwiches and stuff. Yep. Teapots with tea. Yep. It was a beautiful experience. Yeah. It was a very, it was very elegant all right. room. Okay. Did it seem a little out of uh, the environs or? Not really because Singapore prides itself on being a melting point right. with the English and Malaysia's mm. right there, uh, Indian, <laughs> right, yep, yep. Asian. So it's a crossroads, right. ah. and, and they are very, uh, they, they pride themselves and they play it up. Right. All the crossroads and the English is one of them. Right. Okay. okay. Very good. So in beautiful settings. Yeah. It's in a beautiful room with high ceilings and just right. floor to ceiling windows. Yep. And the required fans that are spinning at the top. Right. It was just a very beautiful setting. Yep. Mm, that sounds lovely. And the tea yeah. was excellent. All the right. tea was excellent. Right. Okay. okay. Was it green tea? No. Nope. Black no. Tea. All, All right. right. I suspect I got an English breakfast blend. All okay. right. All right. All right. As one does. As one does. <laughs> All right. Oh, that just sounds spectacular. We got to put that on our list. Oh. Okay. So, okay, one quick thing before we, we jump on to our Toastmasters. Yep. But I wanted to mention, I talked about it earlier, that, Rick, you've always been a tea drinker. There was an article this week in Wall Street Journal that mm -hmm. said, not drinking coffee is the la latest humble brag. Wow. Yeah, no. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure how to react to that. <laughs> well, I, it was one of those things where I thought, are they running out of things to write about? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, I thought it was interesting because, yep. I wondered if this ever happened to you, some of the folks who they interviewed, well-known, mm -hmm. Bezos, Mindy Kaling, yes. these are people who never really drank coffee. Rare company. Oh, and, yeah. and some of them have said, that people are suspect of them. Do you ever get the, you don't drink coffee? No, I don't think I've ever experienced that. I think the biggest thing I've experienced is if I order iced tea sometimes at restaurants, they run the hot water through the coffee maker and it tastes like coffee. Oh, oh. see, oh, that's, okay. that's not. And I'll, leave, I'll push that aside. All right. <laughs> Okay. That's about probably the biggest thing I've encountered. But nobody's ever, most yeah. of the time, people are just like, you don't drink coffee? Yeah, okay. It's just question mark. Yeah. Not okay. not terribly uh, accusatory or no. anything. No. Uh, maybe, maybe behind my back, but not <laughs> to my face. No, right. Okay. <laughs> That's something else. Right. right. So I mean, this face is trustworthy. Right? <laughs> it certainly is. There goes without go. saying. That's right. That's right. But I, I did think that it was kind of interesting because what, uh, another part of the the article was that there's a shift. A lot of people are, you know, wanting to be healthier right. and drink tea. And matcha, it one of the the uh, the cafe owners that they they talked to said this is now his fastest growing beverage is the matcha. Huh. Really? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. So there you have it. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Now I want to talk about something. Chris and I want to ask some questions of uh, Rick and Carol because they belong to an organization, mm -hmm. Toastmasters, which we've all heard about in some sort of form. And we know it has a lot of value. Mm -hmm. And we thought, and I know you're, you have a group called Confident Communicators. So I'd like to ask you a couple questions. One is, how did you get started in it? What brought you into Toastmasters? And where is the relationship between confident communicators and Toastmasters? Very good. There are two reasons I got into Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. One of them was I was caught like a deer in headlights once. Yep. It was my 25th anniversary with IBM. Yep. Oh. And we had this beautiful luncheon. Mm-hmm. And they asked me, you know, at one point, you yeah. know, everybody's saying a few words. People were yeah. sharing what it was like to work with me, for me, yeah. or have me as an employee. And that was my turn. Even my mom gave a few words. Oh, But it was my turn. I hadn't prepared anything. Yep. And I didn't know what to say. Yep. 
I don't know what I said. Yeah. It was like <laughs> a, blur. <laughs> a blur. I'm sure I thanked everybody yeah. for coming. This is one of the reasons I pursued Toastmasters was right. to get more uh, confident yes. in speaking and to be able to think on my feet. Yep. The other reason is my boss said, I'll be steady Eddie. Yeah. Because when I gave presentations, I was too monotone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was speaking in conference calls over the phone all the time. So mm-hmm. I didn't have, people could see my slides, but it wasn't exciting. Right. At Toastmasters, going to this club, mm-hmm. it gave me an opportunity to practice. Yeah. And become more animated. Right. And more confident. Yep. Our club is Confident Communicators Club. And that is what Toastmasters is. It's a conglomeration of clubs mm-hmm. all over the year, yep. world. Yep. In fact, there are 14,000 of them. Right. And there are about 80 in the Detroit area, and we're one of the clubs. And what a club environment does is give you an opportunity to try out different techniques and practice yep. speaking. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just five minutes, but you can practice some techniques. Right. And we practice off-the-cuff questions get people a chance to feel the experience and get more confident speaking off the cuff and on their feet so that when someone shoots a question to them, <laughs> they're more ready. Yep. Very okay. Good. And, and I think just what you've shared, your personal story and what got you involved in this, and it's for maybe people who, well, I think it could appeal to a lot. We can all use some enhancements of our, yep. our speaking skills. Right. And even veterans. Yep. So how do people learn or how do they get connected with your confident communicators? Pretty easily. You um, Hopefully we can put a link in yep. this podcast sure. to connect you with our Eventbrite site and you can sign up for a meeting. We meet on the first and second Wednesday of every month. First we start at, um, the, the doors open, we're on Zoom, and we start at 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. The meeting actually formally begins at 8.15. So it's very easy to join. Um, you can come as a guest a few times, uh-huh. but if you're going to actually participate in the program, um, Toastmasters has a fee And our club has a modest fee to help us with our operating expenses. Mm -hmm. So um, join up, and it's really up to the individual how far they want to go, how long they want to work through it. But definitely it's an opportunity to learn speaking skills like how to use your facial gestures, much (laughs) less how to use your hands to really make a point or how to change your tone so that you can get people's interest and maintain it. Yes. How to structure a speech. Right. There's a lot of different skills that we will help people with a curriculum that um, Toastmasters has pull, pulled together for us. And you go through that curriculum and you can gain as much or as little skills as you choose. Yeah. But if you follow through the, through the program, you will become more confident and be able to organize your thoughts a lot better. Mm-hmm. Definitely a program that's worth it. Oh, great. So, I mean, uh, as, as people have kind of gone through it, is there anything, any individuals or any stories of, uh, of uh, people that have kind of, you know, gone through it and, and kind of made a change in their lives? We have seen many people yep. gain from Toastmasters. Yeah. We have one individual who became more confident speaking and he got promoted at work. Yeah. Oh. That became a manager. Uh, we have a gal who would give classes once a year yeah. on the change in the Michigan tax code, <laughs> the tax code. Co- Ooh. Yeah, there's a challenge. <laughs> when she started pausing and organizing things down to 20-minute segments, giving people a break, her ratings went up uh, sky high. Yeah. She learned how to introduce that material tax code yeah. in such a way that could be absorbed. Yeah. We have seen people gain more confidence, even get jobs, yes, or get better jobs, or maybe even start a podcast. There you go. <laughs> I was going to get to that. <laughs> yeah. 
no, I, it's uh, and I think that's uh, I mean, from what I understand, that's probably the the biggest value of of that is just, and it's a probably uh, 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 it's a cliche, but it's true. But you know, you you can transform your life through that sort of uh, activity, and it's you know, your it's your own agency uh, on on how you how much you want to do it, and uh, I think that's a great program. I think I, I'll jump off of what you yeah. just offered, and yep. it is true. Gaining confidence in skills, if you think about it, a leader that gets up in front of you right. and starts talking, and they wander all over and don't really get to the point, mm-hmm. that's somebody that you're not going to respect. Right. Vice versa. Yeah. If you want a promotion and you're working, as Chris knows, yes. I worked for Chris and wandered into his office and blathered <laughs> on about what I needed yeah. instead of just getting to the point. <laughs> I learned to get to the point. Yeah. And it's, it's a thing. it really <laughs> helps leaders. Yes. Yeah. 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 It, it really enough. helps if you're a person who wants to get ahead in a corporation. If when you walk into the boss's office and you're succinct and don't right. chew up a lot of their time, right. trust yes. me, they're going to notice. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what's interesting is that when you go through the Toastmasters program, because you both you are both of you are very involved, but you also participate in uh, competitions yep. yourself. Right. So you don't just hang it up. Yep. You're still actively involved. Weren't you in one, Rick, a few weeks ago? I just competed in what's called table topics. It's off the cuff speaking. Mm-hmm. They ask you a random question, mm-hmm. and you have one to two minutes to actually answer that question. Yeah. Think of being in an elevator and somebody asks you a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. that situation. Mm-hmm. Right. And, yeah, I actually won the district level of that, nice. which is where that one ends. Right. But there's also a contest that's called International Speech Contest, mm-hmm. and that goes all the way to the international stage. Mm-hmm. And anybody who wins at the district will go on to another series of finals. Mm-hmm. And the individual who wins that, and you can go out and do a YouTube search, you can do right. international speech contest winners, and you'll see what these people are capable of putting into a seven-minute speech. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they become extremely well-known yeah. outside of Toastmasters, and they become in demand to be speakers for keynotes and, and different things of that nature. So yes. it's, a, it's obviously an opportunity to build a career on speaking. Hmm. That's very interesting because it, it, so it's not just, you know, within the corporate world, there's a lot of different applications right. for this. Oh, absolutely. We've had politicians come join our group. We've oh. had people yeah. in you know, that, that worked at McDonald's come in and just being able to communicate better yeah. improve their job skills overnight. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't matter what walk of life. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely a place for speaking and speaking clearly. All right. Great. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, really, uh, that's good stuff. <laughs> it is good stuff. <laughs> All right. So, okay, because okay, I know it's, it's we really want to give a shout out to you because you have been so dedicated to that. Yeah. And it's volunteer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And your mission is to still keep that outreach going. Mm-hmm. Get this confident communicators communicated out there. there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And, yes, and uh, we, yeah. we yeah. want to. And, and uh, so we we have so Barb has a, a YouTube channel that we'll we'll post this out and we'll we'll have the uh, the link and the contact information awesome. as part of that. Cool. So I Thank encourage you. people to uh, to check into that. Uh, just uh, geographically, I, I don't know if we mentioned this. So you guys are in North Oakland slash Macomb County, roughly. We're in uh, we're in north, the edge of Oakland County, Macomb County. Right. But the real uh, reality with Zoom. Yeah. Oh, it's we, everywhere. Uh, ah, it's okay. Really everywhere. Got We've it. had members from two or three continents. Okay. I was in a club that had members from every single continent in the world. Yep. On and on and on, all because Zoom has made that possible. Yep. So we are going back to being a hybrid club where we will actually be meeting in person for those that are nearby. Yeah. And still supporting those that are members from from other. Okay. All we, right. we meet in the morning on the first and third Wednesday. There are other clubs that meet in the evening. Right. You can Our club's the best club. <laughs> 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 it's in the morning. 
However, if the morning doesn't work, yeah. uh, Toastmasters International, mm-hmm. toastmasters.org, you could go there, put in your zip code, and find a club right. near you. Great. Okay. All right. All right. Very well, good. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have, again, in all the years we've known you, we've we've always communicated quite well. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, take it to that next level professionally. Uh-huh. It's great. All right. Okay. Well. So. Do I oh, hear that is, certain sound? We, you might. Hang on a second. <laughs> oh, I hear the <laughs> kettle whistling, and that signals us that we're wrapping up yep. our podcast. So we want to thank Rick and Carol Durling, our special guests, for joining us and sharing all their uh, information on ginger tea and toastmasters we want to thank on tv for allowing us to be in the studios and we want to also say again we appreciate any of our viewers slash listeners feedback and as always we appreciate you staying tuned nice so what do you think of of your first podcast this was fun Yeah, we're still yeah, on. We're, we're still on. <laughs> <laughs> we're still on. We'd like so. to have you back. Yes, yeah, absolutely. We'll come back as we'd love to. Okay. Okay. All right. Tell another story. Very good. Okay. We're done. <laughs>